Welcome to our YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to do C-Speak Load Calculation based upon American Standard AAC 07-2010. In the right hand side, you can see a PDF file AAC 710 which is required to calculate seismic load. In the left hand side, you can see an Excel sheet which is developed to demonstrate the seismic load calculation using AAC 710. first input we record is mapped spectral response acceleration parameter at short periods we can call it as ss it is 0.5 we can consider this is based upon the project information or technical specification second one is mapped spectral response acceleration parameter at a period of 1 second this we can consider as 0.2 so this value or range as per the table mentioned in page number 109 so here you can see table 11.41 and 11.42 ss is having the value of 0.25 0.5 0.75 1 and 1.25 similar like s1 at that is at a period of 1 second is also having less than 0.1 0.2 0.3 0.4 and greater than 0.5 so these are the limitations and the next one is a soil profile this is as per technical specification related to soil or project information or soil investigation report we can get what type of soil this is and these are categorized in table 23 of is of ac 7 2010 for that page number 247 to be referred so here in the right hand side pdf you can see there are six types of soil hard rock is a rock very dense soil and soft rock stiff soil soft clay soil soils requiring site response analysis in accordance with section 21.1 so you can see the definition here after selecting the type a to f from drop down list so these are added in the tables reference of code in this excel tab so here you can see so likewise we need to select from this a drop down list based upon the soil report based upon this is soil report we need to find out the site coefficient so that is as per table 11.4 and 11.41 and 11.42 page number 109 to be referred so here there are two tables so table 1141 is to get the value of site coefficient fa and similar like for fe the site coefficient is 2 so this is as per the table this fa and fe are related to ss and the s1 respectively so these are worked in backup of this table reference code tab so here this table is mean for fa whereas soil profile and the ss value we are getting 1.4 similar like for fe site coefficient fe we are calculating here based upon soil profile and the s1 value of 0.2 so we are getting 2 so this tables are extracted from the right hand side standard ac 07 2010 so we have this site coefficient now next one is we need to find out the risk category of building for that we need to go table 1.51 
पेज नंबर 45 सो हियर इन दिस टेबल यू कैन सी रिस्क कैटेगरी 1 2 3 एंड 4 सो द डेफिनेशंस आर गिवन इन द लेफ्ट साइड ऑफ दिस पीडीएफ फाइल इन दिस टेबल सो हियर यू कैन सी द डेफिनेशन वंस आफ्टर सेलेक्टिंग फ्रॉम द ड्रॉप डाउन लिस्ट this table is extracted here in the tables reference so this is a table which is extracted from the standard code so we can consider building and other structures the failure which could be pose a substantial risk to human life that means category 3 so then we need to find out the importance factor for that table 1.52 to be referred so page number 48 to be referred for that so you can see here risky category for 3 the value of seismic importance factor is 1.25 so this is also directly consider from here this table next one is we need to find out the response modification coefficient this is as per table 12 to 1 of ac 7 then for that we need to go page number 120 so here you can see there are lot of structural behaviors are listed here so based upon our structural behaviors say for example if our structure is a bearing wall system there are several categories are listed here up to 18 and suppose our structure is like a building frame system there are also several categories maybe up to 26 numbers you can see in the pdf then movement resistant frame systems also there are several types up to 12 dual systems there are 30 numbers dual system with intermediate movement frames there are eight shear wall frame cantilever column systems so likewise we we know that what kind of structure we are going to design and based upon that we need to select the we need to consider the response modification coefficient as per this table so here for our calculation we can consider steel ordinary cantilever column systems this means a tall chimney type of structure this is so for that r value is 1.5 so we can directly consider here 1.5 next to one is to design spectral response acceleration parameters this we need to find out from section 1143 and 114. 4 of ASC 0710 for the page number 108 108 to be referred so here you can see the formula to find design spectral response acceleration parameters sts equal to 2 by 3 sms this sms value you can find out from this above formula where sms equal to fa into ss so this formula is just concluding with 2 by 3 of sms equal to fa ss so we are having fa value and ss value just applying in this formula we are getting sts as 0.467 similar like for st1 also we need to calculate as 2 by 3 SM1, SM1 equal to FP into S1. So we are applying the input which we got calculate in this formula, and we are getting ST1 as 0.267. Next one is we need to find out the seismic response coefficient. This is as per section 12.81.1 of ASC 7.10. 
for that page number 120 to be referred. Sorry, page number 132. So here you can see the formula C S equal to S T S divided by R divided by I E. So we are having the input like S T S, R and I E. Applying this into the formula, we are getting C S that is seismic response coefficient as 0.39. So after finding the uh, seismic response coefficient CS factor, we need, we need to check as per the standard because that standard says CS equal to STS divided by R divided by IE. But even though in here in the value, the value of CS computed in accordance with the equation 12.82 need not exceed the following CS equal to SD1 divided by T into R by IE for T is lesser than or equal to TL. So for that we need to check with the ST1 also. So ST1 we are having 0 0.267. In order to calculate this formula, we need to find out the T that is fundamental period for that fundamental period, the code had defined various methods. First one is we need to have a physical model with all the loads to be applied on that. From that we need to calculate the time period that is fundamental period T. For this demonstration purpose we don't have any model, any structure model. So we can directly consider the approximate fundamental period which is defined in section 12.8.2.1 of AAC 710. So page number 133 we have to see. So here in the right hand side PDF you can see approximate fundamental period T is equal to CT into HNX whereas HNX is the structural height CT and CX are determined from table 12.82 so we are considering height of the structure hns 10 meter this is assumed value and approximate uh, peri uh, approximate period parameters ct and x we need to refer table 12.8.2 So in the same page, you can see uh, depends upon the structure type, the CT and X values are uh, provided. So we are considering here steel movement resisting frames having the CT value of 0 0.0724. Here in the bracket above it is mentioned text A. The uh, definition for A is given here. Metric equivalents are shown in parenthesis so this we are going to calculate in a metric unit only so here you can see that the total vertical load we are considering as a 10 kilo Newton so it is in metric unit so 0 0.0724 we need to consider for CT so we are considering the same in the Excel sheet and similar like that X value also we need to consider as a 0 0.8 as per the table 12.82 so we are considering the same then we can calculate this approximate fundamental period as per the formula just we get seen here T is equal to CT HN power X so by calculating this we are getting the value T is 0 0.46 second then we need to check this along with the mapped long period transition period so this is given this check is given here if the T is less than or equal to TL, then we need to consider C is equal to ST1 divided by T into R divided by IE. If it is greater than TL, then this is a formula STL TL divided by T square into R divided by IE. So to calculate, to find the TL, that is a long period transition, we need to check figure 22, 12 through 22, 16. 
so for the page number 267 we need to refer so these are the map showing long period transition so based upon the location of the project we need to pick from this map so there are three or four pages we need to refer the location exactly hey here we can consider 12 second as our uh, long period transition depends upon the project we need to uh, give this value here alternatively this approximate fundamental period can also calculated using number of storage so this is also defined here so ta generally we are having this formula addition to that there is one more formula here to calculate approximate to fundamental period ta equal to 0.1 into n n is number of storage above the base so the storage height should be defined at least 10 feet or 3 meter so in such a way if you are having a multi storey building then multi storey building of a five storey then ta is equal to 0.1 into 5 so that means 0.5 is your approximate period 0.5 second alternately for masonry or concrete shear wall structures this is a formula to calculate after calculating this tl and ta we need to check whether ta is less than tl so according to this case shown in the standard so we are applying this formula so if this ta is less than tl then the formula is this one similar like if cd if tl is greater so this formula is including the both the cases and the next again here it is given that cas shall not less than 0.44 sts ie which is also should be greater than 0.01 applying that formula we are getting 0.03 which is less which is greater than 0.01 and lesser than 0.48 so also we already calculated this cs value using sts in the formula as we done earlier but that is 0.39 is less than 0.48 so here the formula is applied that minimum of cs value 0.48 and 0. 39 should be considered so hence our cs factor value is 0.39 so next is we are assuming the total vertical load as a 10 kN and finally we need to calculate seismic base shear this is as per section 12.8 of aac 710 page number 132 so here you can see seismic base shear v equal to cs into w so cs we already calculated w we had assumed as a 10 kN so multiplying these two 0.39 and 10 kN we are getting seismic base shear as 3.9 kN so this is the way to calculate static method of a seismic load Thank you. Look description for more related videos. Subscribe to this channel for more updates. Thank you.